and we are live. Peace and blessings, family. This is your brother, Asar M. Hotep, with the Madhu Mandela Institute for the Advancement of Science and Culture and the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology. This is the Mbongi, and today is Saturday, April the 3rd, 2021. And we're going to have a in-depth discussion about what it means to be an African-centered high-value man, along with his definitions, characteristics, and expectations. So all that and more when we return in just a sec. Peace, peace. Welcome back. And I am back. I am your host, Brother Asar M. Hotep. And, um, you know, I normally don't do shows on Saturdays, but I just happen to be off this Saturday. So uh, I, I figure I get it in. And so I just want to welcome each and every one of you who are uh, listening live. And then, of course, those of you who are catching the archives. And so if you're just tuning in, the topic of the show is an African-centered, high-value man, definitions, characteristics, and expectations. And the reason for this show topic today is because, you know, the end of 2020 and, you know, the beginning of 2021 has really kind of highlighted this term and really kind of amplified this term high value man and you you'll see a lot of terms excuse me you'll see a lot of videos on youtube and the so-called manosphere uh, that talk about what it takes to be a high value man and while probably most of it probably 87 percent of it i agree with in general, uh, there there's still a lot missing from the conversation. And what is missing from the conversation, of course, is the African-centered perspective on what it means to be a high value man. And so that's what we're going to get into uh, today. And um, so, you know, this conversation is actually going to be broken up into two parts. So the first hour, I will just present my information and my perspective on what a high value man is and especially one from an african center perspective and and then in the second hour i want to invite you all to come and give your insights so i'll be putting the link in the uh the chats so if you're on the uh, sarum hotep you know facebook page um the harold johnson facebook page as well as, of course, on YouTube, uh, the link should should be there when that time comes. So I want to say peace and blessings to everyone who has made themselves known in the chat. So uh, peace to uh, Sister Tamika, peace to Eni Herrick Calfani, Omar Reed, uh, Damian Damo Everly, and OG Gorilla. Uh, thank you all for joining the conversation. And of course, those of you who are uh, catching this conversation on uh, Facebook. And so I don't know if I can stream live to Twitter, but um, I think I would have to go through Periscope or something to that nature. Somebody help me out with that in the near future. But uh, so, yeah, so that's going to be how the show, you know, kind of goes today. 
and uh, peace to I am King Sosa, peace to ATL Superstar Show, uh, Sunjata Atta, uh, peace and blessings to all of you all. And so, you know, this is a very important topic, and this is something that, you know, the whole concept of a high value man is not new whatsoever. And, you know, those of us who are men, you know, have been involved in this conversation since we were born, essentially. And what is what's making it new and making it surprising is that one, because of social media and two, because the uh, a lot of women are 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 getting into the conversation, especially as a result of you know shows like you know Fresh on YouTube, you know female strategies. Uh, who else is 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 in that mix? Of course, Kevin Samuels, you know, and the like. And because you know a lot of women are now engaging and really kind of seeing what it is that that men want of that particular caliber, you know, the conversation is kind of kind of elevated, you know, over the the last few months. And so again, I wanna I wanna well someone said I was breaking up. There's static. Um I don't know if it is static. Y'all let me know if it is still going, uh, someone saying in the chat that there was some static or some some feedback or something to that nature. So uh, uh, those in the chat, let me know if I'm if I'm I'm still breaking up or something to that nature. Uh, let me know if I'm all good. Give me a thumbs up. And speaking of thumbs up, you know, thumb up this video, like, share with your family, or whatnot, and you know, what is good. So first and foremost, just want to let you know, of course, that I have a Patreon page. So if you want to support this channel and support the upcoming documentary film, you can do that by uh, su uh, supporting the Patreon page. And so that's patreon.com forward slash Asar Imhotep. And the upcoming documentary film is called Chiena Into. And so you can find out more by uh, hitting that link. And as well, you can, you know, purchase merchandise. So like I'm wearing one of the shirts now. So um, this is a Bukanda shirt. So for those who are in the know, uh, we have renamed Africa to Bukanda. And, you know, we already have a whole video on that. And then you can also see that in the Aluja Volume 2 text. And so uh, so this is one of the shirts here, the, the Bukanda. And so you can pick them up on uh, spreadshirt.com and the link is in the description. And so I have, this just came in um, the other day. This is another shirt. This is, for y'all know, I've suggested a, a, a renaming for African-Americans. It's just a sticker. Don't worry about that. Um, for the, the Buy and Cole. And so you can pick up you know, the, the buy and cole shirts and this whole bunch of other designs that that you can find, you know, on uh, the website. So all kinds of colors and uh, men and women's, you know, uh, apparel. And so we're going to do it big with the apparel this year. So, you know, y'all can just hit the link in the, in the description and, you know, we'll be good to go from there. So with that said, I am about to get it in. So remember that, you know, to uh to like and subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to this channel as of yet. And so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and I'll just do the entire screen and I'll just hide that for a sec. And so I won't be able to see your your ch your chats unless I go on the web. I guess I can go on the web, but um, I won't be able to see your chats for the most part. Uh, 
while I'm doing this presentation. So, uh, matter of fact, let me just turn on this other computer. That way I can see um, your chats if, you know, something, the sound isn't right, as y'all have said already. So, you know, keep me on my toes, all of the folks in the chat. And so here we go again. So, so yeah, so as the, as the title suggests, an African-centered high value man, what do we mean by a high value man? And what do we mean by an African-centered high value man? What are the characteristics and things? And so um, just promoting, of course, you know, the Diopian Seals, uh, a research team uh, coming at you in the near future. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of this stuff, as I said, is not new in the true manosphere. Uh, and some of this stuff that I'm going to be talking about today has kind of been broken up into several different books. So, of course, in the Illusion Volume 2 text, in my Where is the Love? How Language Can Reorient Us Back to Love's Purpose, as well as the Nesu Biti King in the Ancient Egyptian, a lesson in paranomy and leadership. So some of these things that I'll be talking about today are kind of spread out between these texts. And so, you know, again, this this notion of being a high value man, uh, especially here in the United States, has been with us for a long time. And so there's 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 not many brothers and sisters who I know um, who are not familiar or, or at least brothers that I know who are not, you know, who have not grown up talking about they were going to be on the cover of GQ, for example. Uh, you know, this is a, a popular, you know, men's uh, style and power magazine. There are other magazines that came out in the 90s that kind of went and gone that were, you know, black, uh, you know, affluent lifestyles. Like, for example, this this monarch, which is in the center and, you know, a newer uh, magazine and online magazine called Well-Dressed Brother. You know, this this notion of 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 gaining power and making power moves and being influential and being high value has has been with us since pharaonic times and i'm going to show you that in in just a little bit when we you know get to that and so um there are a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be a high value man and this is one of the reasons why i wanted to address this in this conversation and that is because when you go on the youtube and you start you know typing in for example manosphere and 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 high value the it there's a lot of people having the conversation and it seems to be focused on these four things looks money status and getting women and while those things are a part and or an effect of being a high, a high value man. It is not the purpose. That is not the signal that someone is of high value. And so we also got to keep in mind that, you know, when someone says high value, if you don't read you don't meet the criterion at that time does it mean you have no value that you're that that you are low value unless there are some other characteristics which we'll discuss that are present so you know this this the discussion is kind of just you know kind of deteriorated into looks money status and how to pick up and sleep with women and that's not what the the high value manosphere discussion is is about and so you know uh again when you go on the web there's going to be lots of discussions about what it means to be a high value man and there is no singular agreed upon definition for a high value man so 
I'm just going to give you two examples of of two individuals that is kind of popular in this sphere and their definitions of what it means to be a high value man and the characteristics. And we'll just work from there. And then when, once I give those two, then I'm going to give mine and then, you know, a, a few examples and things after that. And then we'll just move forward. And so, because again, for those who are just joining the conversation, the first hour, I'm just going to discuss and bring out some information. And then in the second hour, I would love for y'all to come in and join the conversation. I want to get your thoughts on, on this topic. So, you know, one of the guys who has, you know, really gained popularity in terms of the discussion of a high value man is Kevin Samuels. And this individual is a male image consultant originally from Oklahoma, a member of Kappa Alpha Psi and some other things. And so he has his own channel. It's very popular. I recommend that you go uh, check it out. And so this individual is, I think, 52 years of age. And so, you know, half a century of experiences and discourse that is that is discussed on his channel. And so when you go to his his page, you know, he'll 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 normally define what it means to be a high value man, according to him, based on these six elements or criteria. So the first thing is money. And so he currently, although he's from Oklahoma, he currently lives in uh, Atlanta. So, you know, his discussion is based in Atlanta dollars, what he calls Atlanta dollars. And so money and and the the base minimum for him is ten thousand dollars per month. If you make ten thousand dollars per month, you are at the beginnings of what it means to be a quote unquote high value man. Whether I agree with that or not is is unimportant. What he's trying to emphasize here, and this is somebody who who roughly makes six figures, so you know, a hundred thousand dollar a year earner or more. Then number two is the length of time in terms of the uh, performance. Uh, this is anywhere from three to five years. So not only are you making ten thousand dollars per month minimum you are doing this consistently for at minimum three to five years why is this important because individuals could be making money a year or two and then for some reason they don't or they lose it all because of bad business practices lawsuits, things of this nature. So you you see individuals, for example, like sports players who will be in the league for a good, you know, three years and after the league, they're broke because they don't know how to manage their money. They don't know how to to increase. All they know is sports. All they know is football and basketball and things of this nature. So um so for for Kevin Samuels, three to five years consistency in terms of one's performance, performing at peak level so that people understand who you are, which leads to number three, group of, group acceptance by other high value men. In other words, do other high value men recognize you as part of the group? And are you privy to be in those types of circles? to be able to conduct and do business for um for the group you know can they can they rely on you in things of this nature so so other high value men recognizes someone as a high value man fourth network the network of a high value man first and then with others so again, he has group acceptance by other high value men. He he has networked, he has plugged into that group of high value men. 
And then he is grouped with others who may not necessarily be quote unquote high value by the standards in which Kevin Samuels has made, but they're important people in important places that this person has access to and can call upon to achieve some kind of goal. So, you know, you may not think of, you know, a police officer or a sheriff as a high value man. However, you know, if you have ties to somebody who works in the FBI or somebody who was a police officer and things of this nature or a lawyer or whatnot, you know, you have access to information in things that others do not. So as the saying goes, your network is your net worth. You got to be able to to move in different circles and to be utilized by and to utilize that network. Number five, visibility. And what he means by that is that the position and income are LinkedIn level, what he calls LinkedIn level. LinkedIn level, for, uh, for those that don't know, there's a, there's a website called LinkedIn. And this is where you go and you put a profile of yourself and then other people who have interacted with you over the years can vouch for your skill set and professionalism and education. Those people who were there with you in your journey, who have experienced you, they can come and and tell the world like, yep, you know, uh, brother Chavez, brother Robert, you know, brother Sean, they are who they say they are. And I've done business with them and they do good business. And, and that's what LinkedIn is. And so the visibility people know and, not, and also on LinkedIn, they you there's a list. Your resume is there. So people know what you do, where you are at. So if they even if they don't know you and they can see what you do and they may need, you know, someone of your caliber or of your skill set, then they can go on LinkedIn, see what you're about, know what you do and see if they can utilize your um, your person for whatever goals that they may have. And so your visibility when people say your name they know what you do if if you say what you do people know what that is so it can't be vague i'm just an entrepreneur you know i'm a boss what what, what does that mean if, you know that that's very vague that doesn't tell me anything well if i'm the vp of of marketing or whatnot then you know we we understand the title and what that entails and so this is what he means by visibility and lastly, utility. That means you are useful to the group and others. What do we mean by this? It makes no sense for you to be a quote unquote high value man, making a lot of money, hoarding it, and, and only taking, only getting stuff from other people and you're not useful to help them in their goals. So you are part of the group. You, you are high value because you bring value to other people. If you don't bring value to other people, they can't use you. If they can't utilize you, then you are of no value to the group. And so this is, this is Kevin Samuel's six criteria of high value. And so although money, notice that he doesn't necessarily, well, he's an image consultant, so he's big on looks. Um, but there's nothing on here about getting women, you know, uh, and things of this nature. Like you don't become high value so you can sleep with more women. That's beta male strategies right there. So we'll continue. So this is an individual by the name of Casey Zander, you know, European descended male. And, you know, he's kind of popular in the manosphere as well. And, you know, many, many may not know his story about like, if you go on the net and you can see how skinny he was, you know, he's kind of built a platform on, on, on health and working out. He has a number of businesses and things of this nature. And, you know, 
uh, and he has a number of discussions about what it means to be a uh, a high value man. So uh, when I went on his page and uh, his YouTube page, that is, and, and looked at one of his videos, he gave five criteria of what it means to be a high value man. And so um, and and keep in mind, again, that I'm only using two for the sake of time in space here today, but there are a number of places that you can go because there's no one definition. There's no one set of criteria that everyone agrees on, on what it means to be a high value man. So I'm only giving you two here and you can go on the web and see others. But but I, I, I chose these two set of definitions, the Kevin Samuels and the Casey Zander, because there's a lot of things that overlap. Um, not only between those two, but between, you know, every uh, other definitions and things of that nature. So for Casey Zander, a high value man, uh, one of the characteristics is that you must have a purpose that comes before women. Again, you know, going into the manosphere in, in this day and age, you'll see a lot of conversations about high value man and women. This has nothing to do with women. You know, women will come. You, if, if you become a high value man, you don't have to worry about getting a woman. That's that's the least of your worries, you know. And so people are, when, when when people have women as the goal, they never reach their full potential. And so so for him, you must have a purpose that comes before women. Two. You make enough to provide for themselves and for potential loved ones. So this is why the money thing is very important. It's not simply because you just want to have money to show off, but you want to be able to take care of not only yourself, but to position your loved ones to be in a, in a, in a space that they are comfortable, that they can live out their purpose and things of this nature. And so for anyone to say that money is not important in terms of being a high value man, you're, you're not serious. Three is dependable because they are valuable, willing to serve and give. So, again, that that utilization thing and the whole network that that Kevin Samuels was talking about kind of integrates with point number three here by Mr. Zander. So again, it's dependable. That's why you have to have that, that LinkedIn type visibility. So the, the people are backing you up saying that this person is dependable for the, for the job and, and the skill set that he is advertising on LinkedIn. So you, you got to be a dependable person and willing to serve and give to others that means that means you you're you're gaining all this value this value to be of service to others so that's what they're saying here four strong as an ox not just in the body but in the mind also so someone who works out but someone who has mental toughness and number five, love failure. You learn what not to do and you get better. When you F up, you have growth. So this isn't the person, a high value man is a person that doesn't always win. You know, what makes a high value man high value is that he's gained a lot of wisdom because of his failures trying to reach his goals and that he never gave up. So this is this is why you know these these things I find important. And you'll see that I have my own criteria in terms of what it means to be an African centered high value man that overlaps with these two set of criterion from uh, Kevin Samuels and Casey Zander. So I hope this is this is making sense for for those of you who are listening live right now. So of course this is your boy Asarm Hotep and the the focus of this discussion is what does it mean to be an african centered high value man?
So I can't do nothing unless it it, it involves you know the vibes of blackness and and Africanness and African culture. Excuse me as I drink my what is this Bai antioxidant infusion cooler watermelon drink for the evening. Now, so hopefully, um, I, I I hope these uh, show up really well on your devices because um, I think these this text is just a little bit smaller. But I have ten primary. Uh, criteria, and I should note that even the the two uh, individuals that I mentioned earlier, those are just the basis for a high value. And so, if you listen to their their commentary, they will always say that you know you can always add more, but th that's just their bare minimum. So it's not the end all be all. And so it's the same thing with me here. So um, so this is just my ten. This is the basis of, you know, what it takes to be a, an, an, uh, an African centered high value man. And so this, of course, this is this is a conversation for the brothers. And, you know, and and, you know, I, I know some things may may apply to sisters, but, you know, men have a certain role and we have a certain job to do as African men. And and we have to have a standard on what it means to be a high value man so that, you know, we can achieve the ancestral goals that uh, we came here to do. So with that being said, for me, before we can start talking about money, networks or anything to that nature, good character and integrity is the first foundational criterion to being an African-centered, high-value man, hands down. You cannot be high-value, you cannot be of any value to anyone unless you have good character and integrity. Matter of fact, even in, in, in ancient Egyptian times, that's all they would talk about. Is 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 one being of good character. So an example here is from the stele of Antef, where this this phrase here, Neferked, one of good character, when he's describing himself in the stele here, whom his nature taught like a child who was brought up by a father, which means he has home training. And actually, I have become an orphan in this instance. Uh, and I and this this is just a note here. In this instance, the word seba here is used in the pejorative passive participle sense. That's this uh, word phrase here. But this is the one that we're looking at here. Nefreke, one of good character, whom his nature taught like a child who was brought up by a father. So this is why, like you know, they they even stressed in ancient times the importance of having a strong father in the life of a child because it, it is the father who helps to shape the character of the son and to and to give him the the discipline and insights to becoming a high value man so um and you know that that concept in the the Yoruba tradition is called iwe pele you know gentle character I um, mean, we'll just say good character, you know, for now. And so good character and integrity. And that means, you know, you you are going to do the right thing all the time, even when it is not popular at the moment. Because you have integrity. So when people when when people come across you, they know that you are a solid individual, that you are trustworthy. And and that you won't you won't bring shame upon them for interacting with you. This is what it means to have good character and integrity. So number two is initiated, or the number two criteria for being an African-centered high value man is one who is initiated into the ways 
and the values of one's ancestors. You have to be in line. You have to understand and go through the learning process that links you with your ancestors and their values so that you know the best of what your ancestors who they were and are so you use you utilize them as models to to emulate in terms of your life and so you have to be initiated into the culture which which helps to solidify your mission in life because each generation passes the torch of things that need to be achieved in life for the for the community to prosper and that requires you learning about who you are what your gifts are what you came here to do within the context of the ancestral vision and so this is why this is important here being initiated into the ways and the values of one's ancestors. Number three criterion for an African-centered high value man, as far as Asar Mhotep is concerned, he understands his purpose in life and walks his path. See, a, a, a high value man knows what he came here to do and he's focused on that. And when that individual is focused on his purpose and his path, the universe gives him some challenges, but also puts the resources necessary for that individual to accomplish his goals. And so a, per a person without purpose is scattered everywhere. They everywhere, they don't know what to do. They're trying to do everything. They're trying to be everything to everyone. And you can't be everything to everyone. You know, they're hopping from relationship to relationship. They're hopping from job to job. They're, they're hopping from this and this and this. There's no stability whatsoever. You know, a person who is purpose-driven understands who they are, what they came here to do, what's their fight, what is not their fight. And, and this is what we, um, you know, deem as a, a characteristic of a, of a high value man in general, whether he's African centered or not, you know, but for us African centered folks, African centered men know who they are and they walk their path. And, and you know that you're walking your path because there's going to be other people watching you and become jealous of you and not understand why you're able to make the moves that you're able to make while they struggle and can't do it because you're walking your purpose. You're walking your path. You came here to do what you came here to do. And so a, a person who was on his path and on his on his purpose, you know, you the, the world opens up to them. And so the fourth criteria has a world historical consciousness, a world African historical consciousness and is well learned. This is very important here. You can't be African centered without an African centered consciousness. You have to study. You have to know things. You have to read. Not only about just African history and African culture, but just developing a skill set. You got to be very knowledgeable about a thing. Because again, if you are to be utilized as a high value man, they're utilizing you because you have a particular skill set. You are very knowledgeable. And thank you to, uh, I can't read the name because it's too far. Uh, let me see. For the, um, for, the, for the gift and the donation, um, I appreciate you, uh, SOBED1. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, contribution. Appreciate it greatly. <clears throat> so you have to have an uh, uh, African world historical consciousness. And again, you have to be well learned. 
And so nobody's going to gravitate to you if you are an ignorant person or you come off as, you know, pompous and things of this nature. You know, having an African world historical consciousness will help you in understanding your purpose. Because Africans right now are in the building stage. We're we're looking, we're designing the future for African people. And this is what, you know, um, this is what this is where we're at. And so in order for you to know what we need to do, you have to know where we've been and how we got to the stage and where we're at now. And this is what I find missing in the manosphere when we're talking about high value men, especially now I don't, you know, in the white manosphere, I don't expect much coming from that group. But for the black folks, the black men who are talking about being a high value man, very few of them have a African world historical consciousness. And so a lot of what they're talking about is just out of context. You know, and some of them act like we're free at this at this moment in the United States and that you can move and operate like other folks in this world. No African world historical consciousness whatsoever. Number five, the number five criteria according to Asari Mohotep for being an African-centered high value man is he knows the art of unveiling life's mysteries. He is a problem solver. He knows how to get to the roots of problems. You know, whatever is unknown will not be unknown for long with a high value African centered man. Because they, one, have an African world historical consciousness and are well learned, but well learned in the sense that they know how to unravel to get to the heart of problems. Because a high value man is a problem solver. That's why he is of value. He helps to solve problems of others and others support him because of his ability to amass resources and utilize networks to help, to help solve community problems. Number six belongs to a network of other high value men. And so we saw that criterion from uh, brother Kevin Samuels earlier. You know, your net worth is built upon your network. And so if you don't have access to other problem solvers, because you can't do this alone, you know, there's no singular eye Superman that just can handle and do everything that doesn't exist. You know, uh, high value people work in groups and they put together their resources to help solve a problem. You know, matter of fact, a good example of that is the, the CERN Center in Geneva that, you know, different countries came together and pulled their resources to build this multi-billion dollar machine that is several miles long that can, that they use for science and to smash atoms and to discover the Higgs boson and things of that nature. You know, high value people understand the, the power in networking and pulling resources to together, pulling resources together to achieve some larger goal. Number seven, <laughs> a, an African-centered high value man is afraid to die without winning a victory for African people. His whole mission in life is to expand the possibilities of African people. And he will figure it as a, a loss if he was not able to at minimum achieve one victory for African people. This is one of the reasons why he does what he does. And so if you are an African-centered high value man, you 
are afraid to die without winning a victory for African people. Number eight, an African-centered high value man has mastered the art of accumulating resources to achieve higher goals. That's what the having the money is about. But money is just just one aspect of it. And I and I choose to use the word resources. I haven't put a dollar amount on it like Kevin in terms of 10,000. But, you know, you want to be able to have what we call F you money. To where, you know. Your your pockets are straight in a way that you can move independently. So that when you're working for African people on behalf of African people, nobody can hold uh, you hostage in a way because, you know, you're struggling to make ends meet. And that's how a lot of the agents and things of this nature, you know, infiltrate because they're they're always put in a bind. And, you know, they can be offered three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars here to pay a bill or to get something to eat. And then they betray African people. And so when you when when you have built that kind of network and and you've been able to accumulate resources, you have a little bit more room to fight, even if it's behind the scenes. You don't have to be up front on the streets, Black Panther with the with the leather jacket and things on. You know, you can help fund grassroots movements because you have resources or you can provide them with resources, with software, with computers, things of this nature, lawyers, bail money for people who are out there on the street um, fighting and, and protesting on behalf of black people. When 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 you have resources like that, it allows you to to accomplish more. Number eight, an African centered high value man has mastered. Oh, I'm sorry, I just did number eight. Um, number nine, an African centered high value man has mastered the art of being able to tower over life's 1001 challenges. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be ups and downs. What, what you have to master is falling and getting back up, being able to 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 utilize those those resources in those networks and the, the insight and wisdom that you gain from making mistakes to build to a point where now, you know, you you aren't bothered by the challenges of the world. And lastly, number 10, an African centered high value man knows how to recognize and celebrate life's beauties. And what I mean by this is that this is not a stiff person. This is not a stuck up, you know, saying type person. This person has style, likes to have fun and looks at the world with a positive lens. Understanding and you get that kind of lens when you've been through a number of challenges. This is why in secret societies and in uh, fraternities and things of this nature, you go through a pledging process that puts you through struggles that you have to overcome. And once you've been able over a sustained period of time to to overcome these life's challenges, you can't do nothing but be positive. You are bothered by things, you know, saying you know how to, to find a silver lining, you know, in the midst of the storm. And so, you know, you have to be able to look at the beauty of life, to be able to stand back and enjoy the fruits of your labor, to enjoy your family. In things, everything can't be work, 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 money, 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 money. You know, you have to be able to build on that. And thank you uh, to Brother Robert Rand for uh, your super chat. I appreciate it uh, greatly. And so, so this is my ten criteria. So I hope that this makes sense for all of those who are, you know, listening. And so there, as I said, you know, we have a base criterion and then we have a, you know, add ons to it. And so for an African centered high value man, I also add that this person is in general good health. And so there I'm not saying that they have to do this 100 percent of the time, 
but these are people who who eat relatively healthy and who work out you know they go to the gym there they're very active and why is this important because you can't achieve your goals always in an unhealthy state those who are who are active you know people who stretch who can move who has strength and vitality are the end of the kind of individuals that can you know achieve those large goals and so you don't want to waste your you don't want to be in the hospital or in the bed all the time because of health issues you know you 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 want to be someone who um that that people look up to is it's it's a thing when you when you have you know um some strength to you and you're lean like people look at you different when you walk into the room and so you know you can't let yourself go and let your belly get all big and crazy and things of this nature is is you you have to look the part aesthetics is part of being a high value man so you know you're doing this for yourself it's 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 so that you know you can have the vitality to fulfill your purpose but also so that people uh you know notice you and 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 take take you seriously secondly discipline you cannot be a high value man without discipline you know you can't be distracted about every little thing you can't be on social media on the um on on the internet all day arguing with folks people who sit there and argue with folks all day ain't on their purpose not saying you can't have any social media interactions but you know just note what i'm saying a, a person who is about his purpose isn't out there, you know, watching YouTube videos all day. They go either for entertainment or to get some insight and wisdom into something, but they're not wasting their, their whole day watching movies and gossip columns and things of that nature. You know, they are on their purpose. They're disciplined. They're constantly learning. They're, they're constantly plotting for the next move and to help uh ex expand and sustain the empire that they that they are building or have built lastly uh self-defense so a, a high value man knows how to defend himself and his loved ones and so i have in the parentheses here the use of weapons you know learn how to use knives learn how to to shoot weapons properly and store weapons properly if you are in a in a city in a state that allows for a concealed carry, you know, get a license for concealed carry. Why? Because you know, as a high value person, there are individuals who are looking to take what you have, who don't want to work and earn what you have accumulated over the years. And so a a an African centered high value man is a protector of of himself and his loved ones and so that requires getting things to help him protect uh you know assets family and 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 themselves of course and so i have martial arts here learn a martial art you may not have a a weapon on you but can you throw them hands you know you you may need to do that to to to, to even get someone off of you before you can even pull you to get a safe distance for you to be able to pull your weapon, you know, on on someone. Um, insurance is a form of self-defense. You know, getting lawyers, you know, as a African centered high value man, you have to move differently in the world than normal folks. And so if if you know you operate a vehicle make sure you have insurance if you have a home make sure make sure you get life insurance for your family so that so they don't have to come out of pocket to bury you and that you can you can utilize your your life insurance so that your next generation can have some money to invest in their future as well so all of this is self defense Everything is Kung Fu, as we say. 
And so um, other characteristics of a high value man is one, these individuals are take action type people. These males don't sit around, you know, for too long waiting uh, all the time for the right type of opportunity. If the opportunity is not where, not there immediately, they'll make the opportunities for themselves. Or when they see an opportunity, they're able to move and take action immediately. So these these aren't the kind of people who talk a lot. African-centered, high-value men take action on, on what's in their heart's desire. Secondly, and I can't stress this enough, African-centered, high-value men don't gossip. And, you know, women may be offended by my next statement, but it's the truth. Gossiping is for women. That's what women do. They're into other people's business and finding out what's going on in people's personal lives and stuff to this nature. That's not what men do. Not high value men, at least. High value men aren't worried about trying to taint the image of of others. You know, they aren't gossiping. They're not they're not Tasha K's, you know, or, you know, a bunch of chatty caddies and stuff to this nature. You know, if you are a high value man, you know, you you aren't going behind people's backs, gossiping and, and having conversations about them. That's something that women do. That's something that beta males do. If you're a beta male, you you are, are having conversations a, about other people in their personal lives and uh, you aren't you aren't focused, you're not disciplined and you're not on your purpose. And so, and I know it's not all women, but it's, it's, we, we consider this a woman trait. So you have whole magazines and whole shows that are dedicated to gossip and they're all headed and inspired by women. And so men, you don't find too many gossip male column, like unless they're gay. And so, you know, gay men trying to be women like to gossip high value men heterosexual men don't gossip that's not our that's not our forte you know and matter of fact other high value men avoid men like that males like that beta males like that because you know discretion is a key part of being high value you don't tell everything to everyone and we don't trust anyone who is always trying to tell someone else's personal business. And so, you know, that's where the good character and integrity comes from in terms of my list. Next, they had they develop emotional control. You know, there's an old saying that feelings are good servants, but poor masters. A, an African-centered high-value man is an individual who is even-tempered for the most part. Not saying that they can't go to extremes, but for the most part, they are even tempered. They have their emotions under control. And so those beta males, the ones who like to gossip and stuff a lot, you notice that when when you challenge an idea of that person, they get very emotional. They're very defensive and, and always in a, in a, uh, a moody type of, of, of attitude and things of that nature. So, you know, a, a an African-centered high value man is someone who has their emotions under check, because when you have your emotions in check, it gives you time to think about and survey the environment so that you can properly make your next move when the world around you is is losing focus and is scattered and everywhere else. Lastly, again. A, a high value man provides value to the world. There, there's a reason it's called high value man. It's not that you have a lot of money, it's that, that you have a lot of value. You provide a lot of value to the community and the world. And so this is why money is important. Because for example, if you are just a basketball player and you, you get, you know, uh, you know, $20 million a year 
um, for your salary. And, you know, throughout your thing, you just accumulated that wealth. It, it is not a value. You're not a value besides some entertainment. You provide entertainment value, but, you know, you don't have value to the community. But if, you know, in that out of that 20 million per year, you took 3 million and you created a business in the black community where black people can can live and and live comfortably and build in on their own purpose then you provide value to the world in the community whether it's you know in in terms of your products in terms of your your business savvy things of this nature you provide value and the word value de derives from a proto-indo-european root meaning to make strong, to give strength. So in other words, a high value man empowers others. The, his networks, his resource accumulation, his knowledge, his wealth provides and empowers others so that they can level up. And so if you if you don't provide value to the world, you're useless. And so we got to keep that in mind. And so, um, as I have said before, you know, in the African context, like this whole concept of networks is not new. So uh, I've already done a a video on this, so I won't go into depth. But I mentioned that in traditional Africa, there is a thing called the, the African superhighway of wisdom. And this is where men primarily would travel across Africa to other African uh, cities and countries to get initiated into guilds and to priesthoods to gain more value. And then they would come home and share their wisdom and build, help build their community at home. So not only that, they opened up trade routes across Africa. And so we call this the, uh, uh, Dr. Kaikosa Kajagru calls this the, the African superhighway of wisdom. And he talks about this in his text, Wisdom Poetry, which was published in 2006. And so there was something else that he mentioned in that text, which I want to read here regarding the super highway of wisdom that that is relevant to this conversation here in terms of being a high value man. And he says, I call the super highway of wisdom the network that makes it possible to establish a dialogue of mutual enrichment among wisdom traditions. No single person is the mother of wisdom. It takes the sweat and the tears of countless sages working together over thousands of years to build a wisdom tradition. Even when it is well built, a wisdom tradition cannot flourish alone, for it needs to engage in dialogue with other wisdom traditions. It was for this end that ancient African wisdom traditions built a super highway of wisdom, which is still open to this day. So Africans were traveling to, to learn new skills and knowledge so that they can increase their value and to bring that information back home to build. So this idea of, of, of gaining value, gaining strength, gaining wisdom and knowledge to serve the community is old when it comes to Africans. And we built entire networks based on this principle. So when Kevin Samuels talks about your, you know, having a network, when I talk about having a network, this is what African-centered people have. You have to belong to a network. You know, you being there's no such thing as a warrior, a lone warrior. You you belong to an army. You belong to a a system. And that's what a lot of us lack is the system. So I continue. So, 
you know, what we're talking about here in terms of being a high value man, it's about being a uh, a person of value and ultimately being a leader in the community. And so uh, these are our seven criteria that I jotted down from the late Dr. Asa Hilliard III. When he came to, uh, when I was at school at U of H, he, he went to TSU for a lecture and I went to that lecture and I jotted this down. So he gave seven criteria for a leader. And you'll see that a lot of this overlaps with what we um, have been discussing about what it means to be a high value man. Now, keep in mind, he's just saying leader in general. So this applies to both male and female. But for the sake of our conversation, these criteria is especially what is to be expected of a high value man, because a high value man is a leader in his community. Hold on while I take another sip of my Bayi antioxidant infusion cooler watermelon drink. Anyway, so the first thing is that the leader, and we'll substitute with high value African centered, high value man. The, the high value man identifies with his or her family. So remember what I said that they have to be initiated into the ways and um, values of you know his ancestors. And when you are initiated, into the ways and values of your ancestors, you you become acculturated and you identify with your family. So you know who you're working for. You know who you are serving. So Asa Hiller here is saying that a leader, aka an African-centered high value man, identifies with his family. So if you don't identify with African people, you don't identify with black people, you know, you you don't you're not even in the runnings for being an, a, a high value man, in my opinion. Two. Is in continuing dialogue with his or her family, so he doesn't come across as a know it all. He's having conversations with the family, with the community to know what the temperature is in the community and to know what problems need to be solved in the community. You know, who's doing what, who's the movers and shakers, you know, what's what's the plans for the future and, and what knowledge he can share to help the community to grow and what he can learn from the community. So he's in continuing dialogue with his or her family. Number three, a, a high value man is in opera, his operation is for the interest of the family. So as I stated before, you should be afraid to die without winning a victory for African people. You know, you your operation is in the interest when when a, when an African centered high value man wakes up in the morning. The first thing that comes to his mind after, you know, thanking the divine for another opportunity to to walk in their purpose and things and and family is to to ask that question you know what can i do in the best interest what can i do today that is in the best interest of african people and my family you know every time he makes a move he asks this question is what i'm doing the best for the family, my immediate family and my extended family. Does, does it bring shame to my networks? So you have to, to keep this thing in mind. Number four, a, a, an African-centered high value man or a leader, according to Dr. Asa Hilliard, moves to advance the family interest. So this is what I talk about in terms of ancestral mission. Number five, protects and defends the family with his or her life. This is why I say that you have to be in good health. You have to work out and be agile. You need to learn weapons. You know, you need to, to have things like insurance and stuff to, to be able to protect and defend the family. And this includes knowledge. 
So when when people from other communities are trying to debase and devalue, or you have those internal enemies who try to debase and devalue the ones who are fighting on behalf of African people, you can put them in their place. You can defend them, right? Because you have the right knowledge that allows for you to, to halt their advances. Number six is accountable to the family. So this individual, in terms of uh, a high value man is is not, again, he's not pretentious. He doesn't act like he's not part of the community and doesn't have to um, account for his actions within the community. So he moves with community interests, with family interests, and he's accountable to that family. That means if, if this individual is it works his way to become a leading figure in the community that means the community has the right to hold that person accountable for for his actions and deeds and a high value man understands that and lastly is supported by the family especially financially and and this is where the the wealth comes in because as the, the, the person is developing into his high value self, he's developing skills, he's, he's learning how to uh, unearth mysteries, and he's, he's, he's gaining value for himself, he's learning how to solve people's problems. Because he is a problem solver, he provides value to the to community the, the community, the family supports that individual financially. That's where his wealth comes from. And they're willing to support that person financially because they know that that money is going to come right back to the community anyway. That he's just not going to hoard it. Of course, we expect him to take care of his family and, and to make sure that he's straight and his family is straight. But they know that they're going to invest that money back into the community to help the communal interest, to help the ancestral interest. So when you see individuals, you know, who is working on behalf of African people, you should try your best to support them. Not everyone is in. And if you are an individual that is working and, you know, everybody doesn't support you immediately, don't fret. You know, they'll support you when they support you just be thankful you know for for those that do support you at this moment others may support you later they may not can they may not have the means right now to support whatever work that you're doing so you don't get upset because you know you may not get the support right now some people are waiting just to see how you how you come out of certain troubles or whatnot you know, people are wanting to see, wanting to see uh, if you are a person of integrity, a person of good character before they support you. You know, there's different means, there's different reasons why people do what they do. But just understand that when a, when a person, a high value person, a high value man especially, is doing the work, the community supports them financially. And that's where they get wealth from. And so, you know, we have different types of names for these uh, high value men in, in, in African society. So one is called an Nganga. So, you, you know, those who are familiar with my work, you know, I've, I've been promoting Nganga, you know, for the longest. And so, you know, you see an Nganga priest over here on the left, and then you see an Nkondi figure. We have, you know, a, well, a portrait of a well-known Nganga who passed away. Uh, uh, a number of years ago, Dr. Fukial, who was a, a master, you know, um, in Nganga, you know, out of the, the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kinshasa. So <laughs> the, you know, this is, uh, you know, just the name for, for a, a high value man in uh, the Congo. So in ancient Kemet, you know, they had many different names, but one of them was, a, you know, how we pronounce it as Seba, a Sebau, you know, which is a sage, a priest. So remember, they didn't have capitalism back then. So, you know, they didn't have no $10,000 per month, you know, as a basis. But, you know, their 
their accumulation of courses in networks, resources, and knowledge. And so, you know, this word seba here, this is uh, Imhotep on the right, uh, means to teach, to instruct, to tend, is a wise person. It's a word for supervision, guidance, and direction. Um, but also in, in, the, in the nominal sense, in terms of a human person, it's a helmsman, a leader, a guide. That's what a seba is. And this word exists all over Africa. And so in Coptic is, is Sibo, which means teaching, education, intelligence, Sabe, wise, intelligent, judicious, Sibui, dis disciple, an apprentice, you know, Seb, intelligent and cunning, Sebo to learn to teach. In the Bambara language in West Africa, they had the word Suba, which means an initiated teacher and student, one versed in hidden knowledge only known to initiates. Remember what I said earlier that a, a, an African-centered high-value man is one who is initiated into the wisdom and the values and the ways of their ancestors. And so initiation is, an importance, is important to this process in terms of being high-value. And so um, in the Bantu languages, they have the different variations of the words. So you have ziba, lebe, zeba, ziba. Seba, etc. And in for those who have Aluja Volume Two in the etymology, the chapter on the etymology of the word Seba, I have all the source material uh, so that you can look this stuff up. Uh, so I'm just copying and pasting from Aluja Volume Two. But this, this, these are words that mean throughout the Bantu world: knowledge, wisdom, diviner, physician, one who knows is an expert in to teach, to have intercourse with, to converse with the spirits, a priest, a magus, you know. And so you had this other word variation, uh, sabuut, uh, intelligence, knowledge, cleverness, wisdom, ability. So you notice that a high value man in the traditional African sense is one who is very knowledgeable, who is an expert in something, who is a priest. That's all a priest is. A priest is what we're calling an alpha male, a high value man, you know, in, in this modern age. And so those individuals, these these are these are the people who added value to the community. And so there's another phrase uh, also out of the Congo, which uh, Dr. Mubai Binge Bololo has has presented to us called a shushukulu. And so this is a term that I use for um you know many of our professors uh and and wise ones you know who have who have brought value in terms of the academic and intellectual sphere you know and so uh Bilolo reminds us that shushukulu comes from a root shukula Zikula, which means to reveal, to explain, to go up the tap root, to enlighten. The title Shushukulu means luminous spirit that illuminates the roots, that brings up to date what is hidden, which unveils what is covered. So remember what I, you know, that uh, the, uh, I forgot what number it was, but it's, you know, an African centered high value man is one who has the ability to unravel life's mysteries. And so we would call that person in the Congo Shushukulu. They're the ones who are able to bring up to date what is hidden, unveil which is covered. So one must consider that the roots of a tree or a plant are hidden under the ground. Therefore, this notion of illuminating the roots means essentially to uproot something, to penetrate the depths um, below, to reveal the roots or the, or the source of that which appears on the surface above ground. They're problem solvers. The Shushukulu is a superior spirit, but with a more scientific connotation of savant a scout, a doctor, highlighting the source, the roots of things and phenomena. Shushukulu is related to the word bushukudi, whose variants are bujukudi and 
jijikula. These come from the verb kushukula or kujukula, which means to show the bottom or base of something. Explicit what is in or to explicit what is implicit, to clarify what is unclear, to expose. So they reveal they they're they're scientists. They're very knowledgeable and because of what they know, the more that they know, the more valuable they become. The more skills that they develop, the more knowledge they accumulate, the more valuable they become to the community. That's why, for example, when the, the phrase from the late uh, Amadal Hapati Ba, when an elder dies, it's like a, um, a library has been burnt. Because that individual has, you know, decades, almost a century of accumulated wisdom and information. And so that a person is a living library. And so that individual is someone who informs the community of their history, of the evolution of the society up to this point. And so again, the Siba is a helmsman, a leader, a guide. And so like you, you'll see in the ancient Egyptian text sometimes, you'll see a star shining light on the forehead of an individual. And, you know, and I go through this in Illusion Volume 2, that they are awakened ones, they're enlightened ones, they help other people to see. So a high value man helps other people to see. That's what makes them a teacher, a guide, a leader, an alpha. They pave the way. They give, they give, they carve new paths for people to walk. They expand our knowledge of what the possibilities are, you know, for existence. And so we continue with Shushukulu. It is not simply a steward, but a scholar, a scientist, or in the Greek conceptualization, a sophos. In a strict sense, he is the divine God itself. Shushukulu as God is regarded as Chibitoke wa mona kubudi, kabuji, door that sees both sides, a being who has eyes in the physical world as well as in the spiritual world. Neither the inside or the outside has a secret. He is everywhere present. Now, when Shushukulu is applied to a, a man, it simply means wise or one who is a scholar. Therefore, the one who the Greeks called a Philosophos is called in Luba Shushukulu. So I, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that I'm I'm, I'm helping y'all to see, you know the you know what it means to be high value in the African sense, and so he continues uh, in 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 terms of this discussion with this this also, this other concept called Inkindi, which is related to Shushukulu. And so to, to the question, what is in Kindi? The Luba answer, Udi in Kindi Shushukulu in Gelelu, Wamu in Genyi. In Kindi is a specialist. In, in Kikongo, they would be called an Nganga or a scholar in the art or way of thinking. They're, they're critical thinkers. They're wise persons. They're able to solve they're able to, to, to unravel mysteries and solve problems efficiently. By combining the different variants of thinking or to think, we get the following definition. In Kindi, Udi, Shushukulu, Mu, Jiela, Jiluka, Jilunga, Jinana, Ne, Jifuka, Jia, Nginyi. That is to say, the in Kindi is a Shushukulu in the art or manner of making, building, developing, weaving, stretching, extending, expanding, creating, and inventing thoughts or ideas. A, a African-centered, high-value man is a builder, is a pioneer. African-centered, high-value men 
don't wait on Europeans, Arabs, or or Chinese or uh, or other folks. They don't wait on their permission to move forward on ideas. They are pioneers. They build. They are nation builders. And of course, everybody's not going to understand the African-centered high value man until they accomplish what they came here to accomplish. But a, a, a Shushu Kulu, an Nkendi, is a builder, a critical thinker, a developer of frameworks. That's what we do. We don't sit around and wait for permission to be great. We do it because it's on our heart to do it. And that's what we came here to do. And nothing's going to stop us from doing what we came here to do. And so we can go back even further between the years 2052 and 1778 BCE to uh, an inscription of Antef, 11th and 12th dynasty. When he talks about a leader or a philosopher, what is a high value man in ancient Kemet? Let's read. It is one whose heart is informed about these things which would otherwise be ignored. In other words, this individual focus on things and they're able to see things that other people ignore. That keeps them up at night. Mysteries. A, an African-centered high value man is compelled by mysteries. He can't sleep until he solves the riddle. So it is whose heart is informed by these things which would otherwise be ignored. The one who is clear sighted when he is deep into a problem, the one who is moderate in his actions. Again, this person is not emotionally everywhere. He doesn't rush into things. He takes action, but he's moderate. He thinks before he moves who penetrates ancient writings, who studies and reads. You can't be African-centered high value and you don't read, aren't a critical thinker, are able to read between the lines, to do scholarship, who is sensible enough to unravel complications. That means that they, what it means to be sensitive enough, that means you're able to detect the most minutest thing that helps to unravel the mystery of life. This unraveling of mysteries is, is a key component to a high value man who is really wise, who instructed his own heart. He's self-motivated. He's not waiting on everybody. Well, I just need, you know, uh, you know, someone to come in and, and motivate me. No, they're self-motivated. Instructed by his own heart and mind to move in a certain way. Who stays awake at night as he looks for the right paths. High value men, at least starting now, they don't sleep long. They up all kinds of night because the best ideas come at night. I know that is for me. You know, it's hard for me to go to sleep early. If I go to sleep early, I'm just going to wake up in the middle of the night anyway and, and continue some work. Now, no, look what I have in red, who surpasses what he accomplished yesterday. He's always improving. He's always learning. He's not satisfied with where he's at. Not saying that he can't, he can't be grateful for where he's at but he always wants to accomplish more. Who is wiser than a sage who brought himself to wisdom, who asks for advice and sees to it that he is asked advice. So again, a, a leader, a philosopher, a high value man, 
an African-centered high-value man is one who does not try to go at it alone. He seeks counsel. And because he is of uh, such high value, other people seek his counsel. That's what makes you a leader. People are coming to you for advice because they believe that you have information that will help them level up in some area of their life. That you have the necessary experience that they can avoid the pitfalls, you know, while they're walking their path and journey. And so ultimately, a high value man from the perspective of Bukanda traditions, Bukanda's on my shirt, that's we're talking about African, you know, uh, until we start using Bukanda, you know, regularly, you know, I'll, I'll use African, but Bukanda traditions is one who knows the art of harnessing Ashe. What is Ashe? You hear this term, those of us in the in African Center world community, you know, we, we, we use the word Ashe like, like Christians use Amen. But Ashe is a noun that means a coming to pass. It means law. It means command. It means authority. It means commandment, enjoyment, imposition, power, precept, discipline, instruction, canon, biding, document, virtue, effect, consequence, imprecation. That's what Ashe is. Ashe comes from a verb root, uh, she, meaning to do, to act, to work. So when you are an African-centered, high-value man, you are an individual who knows the art of harnessing and distributing and utilizing Ashe. Developing and gaining power. There's a person who has command, who is disciplined, who has a, a lasting effect, a, a man of virtue, who lays down laws. They walk differently in life than other folks. And so, you know, another name is nature, God. This applies to divine beings and human beings. And uh, the, the cognate for the word nature, God in Chiluba is in Kole. By, and so this is what I, uh, I name African-American people, the Ba in Kole, the Ba in Kola, the eminent and powerful people, the people of Ashe, the people who, who have Ashe. And so the totem that I chose is the sun, you know, uh, in a unique spiral way that represents the the Congo concept of the uh, the Dakinga, which which represents the cycles of life and other demarcations and things of that nature. So, you know, uh, hopefully all of this has, you know, uh, come full circle and I made a little sense, and that you all have enjoyed this. Uh, conversation. So what I'm going to do is, you know, take questions and um, I'm going to put the link out. Uh, so for the, the last 30 minutes or whatnot, um, I want to have a discussion with with y'all and see what y'all what y'all feedback is. What, what do y'all think of what I said and and what's your insight into all of this? So let me uh put the link link to join panel in the chat and hopefully it okay there we go and let me see if you want to join we'll go on twitter for those of you who are on and want to join panel, click this link. I know it's going to be some, it's going to be a slight time delay. So I am 
all good with that. Um, so just let me know if you're going to come in. Let me go to Facebook real quick um, to the HJ page and we'll, we'll see. Uh, get it in. Hold on one second. If you want to join conversation, click this link. Oop, can't spell link. Booyah. In the HJ chat. So, uh, okay, let me go back up here. Are there any questions for those who don't necessarily want to join the uh, conversation, but, you know, who are in the uh, chat? And so don't be shy. I don't have all the answers to everything. So uh, let me know if I was on point or not. You know, otherwise, I'll just end the conversation. And... um so let me know what's on your mind. Well, while we are waiting on on folks to see if they want to oops uh join the conversation, just want to remind others that we have uh merchandise on a spreadsheet. Um page. The link is in the description box. And so this Bukanda shirt that I have on, you can get, you can support the show by wearing your Mbongi, you know, apparel, uh, you know, want to support the Martin Delaney Center for Egyptology, or if you just want to represent African and the new African American identity in terms of the buy and cole, there's various different products there. The devil's advocate, you know, uh, show and shirt. And I have uh, numerous ones regarding, uh, you know, African proverbs and, and things. So it's, it's, it's really a lot more on here, uh, than what I'm showing, uh, right now. But, uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. The link is in the description and, you know, so we can, we can, we can level up and represent our interest. Um, uh, so let me go back. I see someone has come in. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. And then I'm going to add Sister Valicia Moore, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, to the conversation. You can unmute your mic. If you can hear me, Sister Valicia, you are on. And um, I see some activity. Well, I guess not. Um, she went somewhere. So uh, let me see what is this. Brother Saul, your thoughts on my earlier comment at you? Um, I'm not sure. What uh, comment are you talking about? Thought Evoca? Um, I have to look. Let me see. And let's see what she's like. See what the great dog, see, critical thinkers line. Let me see. Um, retype your question and I'll make sure that I get to it. Let me see. Um, you said feelings are good servants. I said, but poor. Well, if I let me make sure I didn't. Uh, I, I said feelings are good servants, but poor masters. Um, not for poor masters. So, uh, so I hope that uh, helps. Yeah, feelings are good servants, but poor masters. So your feelings shouldn't be the director. You know, they they're they're there to serve a larger purpose, but they shouldn't be leading. You should always be conscious and a critical thinking, and your mind leads your actions. Um, hello, Valicia, are you there? Yes, Valicia? yes, I've been having. A, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. I had a hard time earlier <laughs> trying to unmute. Um, I was interested in the part you were talking earlier about um, the qualities of a high value um, African centered man. And is this, is this still that conversation? No, no, this is, this is, this is the conversation. 
Okay, so you mentioned one of the tenants, I think, um, involved interest in uh, the betterment of Africa. And I'm guessing Mm -hmm. that included pretty much the the diaspora. Um, Correct. Specifically, though, um, are we, is there a push to, like, for networking wise, are are we, Mm -hmm. are you interested in people forming like tangible physical connections? Um, concrete networks with the continent, within with individuals on the continent. Yes, and not only the continent itself, just other like-minded African people in the diaspora. And whether mm-hmm. they're in England, whether they're in France, whether they're in Brazil, the Caribbean, it's just a networks, period. And so you have a, a growing, it's, it's still small, but it's a growing mm-hmm. number of of individuals who are now get, you know gearing up to to do business like for example uh even though he's kind of been done this like professor james smalls and dr leonard jeffrey who opened up a hotel in ghana right really yes and you have who you have others who are you know repatriating back to africa and you know, and or either going to Africa and getting certain types of African textiles and arts and reselling them, you know, here, creating those type of economic networks. And then some on larger, like, you know, in terms of property, you know, building homes and things. So it's not large just yet, but it's growing. And more and more every day I'm seeing people who are uh understanding the value of of African people working together in in building. And so another good brother is Dr. Uh, uh, Salim uh, Faraji out of California, originally from um, Philly. And, you know, like he does, he's been talking about that for the longest and and has has been, you know, uh, uh, going back and forth, you know, for example, to Ghana, trying to do do business and things of this nature also while being african-centered and and historian and stuff to this nature so you you're starting to see more and more of us not only in terms of the scholarship talk about of course connecting and stuff with africa but now we're, we're starting to move into the business aspect of it and so that we can you know start increasing our our ability to compete in the world in, in various different fields. So it's right. Africa is the basis. That's the home. So, so that's that's the new frontier uh for us. It's what's actually the well, old frontier. You, that was a, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I that was interesting because I've I've done a lot of travel back and forth through the continent and the, the men, the male circles are are typically small. I can count on one hand and I'm probably mm-hmm. just not in the right circles. I don't know. But I started off, um, I was in Tanzania and um, Kenya, and I started working with a co-op importing coffee. Um, I started a a pop-up shop, kind of, it was was called Ubuntu Coffee and Craft, which is what led me to your book. My my, my nephew actually put me onto your book, and when I'm in my second year of my PhD, so I I use it heavily for my for Ubuntu epistemology and looking into the etymology of of the word and, and the concept and its use across the continent. But finding black men who were, I, I met a small contingent, for, but again, they were from the Bay Area. Uh, guys, Thai Beach, T and Wadada, they were all from um, the Bay Area. And we were we met in Egypt. But other than that, I've been to Ghana several times. We were at the Year of Return last year presenting some research. But um, mm. yeah, that contingent of men, it's just, I don't know, it's been <laughs> I, I'm going to have to, oh, I'm sorry to, uh, to interrupt. Um, no. I'm I'm going to if you can uh, hit me up uh, via email info at asarmhotep dot com mm-hmm. um, and I'll put this is my email up here. Um, well, it's kind of there. Info at asarmhotep dot com, um, and right. I can I can hook you up with brother uh, Doctor Faraji, and he'll be a good source to kind of. Oh help you kind of expand that and and find some other folks and even even possibly dr solange um dr solange as well she's on the east coast out of dc uh okay 
but you know, she she's she's an Egyptologist, more so dealing with Nubian studies. Uh, but she she's connected in 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 that way as well. So they you know they they kind of run in the same circle as well. It may be Doctor. Awesome. I need to see if Doctor uh, or Professor Manu M. Pym is is connected in that way as well. I think he is. Um, so either way it goes, I'll 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 give you their contact information and you let them know who you, you are so and, and, and stuff to that nature and what um and so they'll be able to uh really kind of you know especially for Ghana uh they'll, they'll be you. able to um put you in the in the right spaces. Um, Thanks. All righty. Uh anything else? No, no, just again, thank your book has been tremendously helpful so far in getting me theoretically grounded and and kind of where I, where I need to be to, to I'll be ABD hopefully by December. So All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'm honored. Well, um as everybody's avoiding uh the what's the name today? Hold on, let me let me ask this question. Or let me get this question. To avoid being colonized, I think you should give definition regarding the goal or meaning of work. For example, what are you working for from a balanced African perspective? Um, I kind of leave that as open. Uh, you know, I, I am a, a practitioner of the Ifa tradition. And, you know, it is of the belief in that tradition that, you know, each person comes to this earth with a mission and, um, and they're there to fulfill their mission. In other words, they have their own fight and, you know, it's their challenge to hook up with other people who have a similar mission so that they together can accomplish that goal. So it just depends. But what I will say, um, I would recommend the books by the University of Kemet Press. And let me see if I can find them real quick. And just the, just the name University of Kemet Press and the various different books by them so that you uh, let me share my screen and uh, here we go so this is you know a research team Dr. Kilimanjaro and his wife Dr. Ife uh, Kilimanjaro um, and the husband and Dr. Taka Kilimanjaro and, you know, uh, and others have come together and put together these these types of texts. So, for example, you know, you have Ma'at. So I think they have, a, a, like, within the past six years, they have produced 33 books, you know, and very lengthy books. But these are books that have been accumulated, the, the, the knowledge and research over decades. And so it's just within the last six years that they compiled all that research into these various different books. So, for example, you have the foundational book, which is the Ma'at book, because, again, we always start off with the development of character and integrity. And so if, if you're trying to to nation build, you're going to have to give the people some kind of ethical and moral grounding before they can move into other spaces. So that's the one that starts off the text. Then you have African time, which is more of like a, a, a history text from the beginning of the universe to the present. You know, it's a very thick text. Then you have this one, uh, Bach two, uh, the United States birth, development, decline, regression before the leap passing away so that you can understand the nature of, you know, how the United States was formed and what were the challenges, the cycles that is going through on its decline and what we need to do to survive it and how we can come on top in our efforts to rebuild in in um, the near future. And so, of course, you have Kemet. Uh, this is just a, uh, a phenomenal picture book, um, you know, showing all of the the images of, you know, black ancient Egyptians so that you have. And they're, and they're all in color in this text. And it's a very thick book. And um, it will allow you to, you know, kind of see for yourself and have a reference to certain images in one single space. 
Um, and then, of course, you have initiation. You know, um, if you're creating rites of passage, you know, for for individuals, you have that there. Um, you have the art of research, you know, how to conduct research. And then you have the methodology book, a practitioner's guide, the art of war, how to defend, how to how to, you know, how to do war. Like, you know, we we forget that in our um, in our efforts to to free and liberate, you know, African people. We forget to teach that we have to learn and study how to fight, whether this is martial arts, whether this is weapons, whether this is, you know, any kind of thing. It's like you need to learn how to do war. And um, so that's what that is. And so, you know, you have the, the Bach Research Methodology Handbook. Uh, what is this? Keperu Fundamentals of the Back to Africa movements. So for those of us who are going back to Africa, there's going to there's some things you need to know before going there and what you need to have and prepare for going there in terms of repatriation. So some guides for that, creating organizations of a new type, you know, Ma'at instructions for children. Uh, what is this one here? Uh, Nikal, 100 diagrams, charts, tables, and templates for organizers, teaching you how to organize. And so uh, an outline of African history, outline of U.S. history, research process templates, research teams, how to put together research teams. It, they have another one on study teams. You know, uh, see by a researcher's first handbook, um, you know, uh, basic training manual you know, for for mental, moral, and martial arts, you know, survival teams, you know, what does it mean to put, to, to get together a survival team? You know, like all of this is very important. So like, you know, those, that question that you're, you're, you've asked, um, you know, this is a new body of literature that, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm missing one. And, and this is what made me think of them in the first place. So Hopefully it's up here because it, it's it's a text like where do we go from here? You know, research to do what? I don't think it's on here uh, just yet because I don't think it's been released. But that that very question, they have a whole book dedicated that it work to do what unify to do what? And they provide, you know, these these tips, you know, what must be done? You know, a 256 page book. Um. You know, so it's like, you know, we we have the works. So within what I would argue is that within, you know, researching these various different things, you'll find out what work needs to be done and what you can do individually to contribute. Again, you're not going to be able to solve all the problems as an individual, but um, as a team. And that's why, you know, he has the books on creating teams, you know, we'll be able to accomplish those things. So that's the University of Kemet Press that I would recommend uh, those who are listening to to get those texts. So I hope that in part answers your question. Um, let me see. Well, poor masses depend on feeling serving for themselves rather than reason centered to others. Seems like a huge missing link behind much of the cracks across time and society. Um, not quite sure what you mean uh, here. Um, you see, thought evoker, being proactive towards all rather than feelings that which my nature serves. So feelings, what you're saying here is that when you, you know, like think about it in this most extreme sense, you know, how many people are in prison right now because they didn't think first, they just went off their emotions, how they felt in the moment. See, your your intellect is what's supposed to bring you around. Nobody is in jail right now that deserves to be in jail, I should say, because they critically thought about something first and and weighed the pros and cons and 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 things of that nature. Most of the folks on there they were emotional and reacted immediately without thinking. And so again, feelings are good servants but poor masters. They should not master your life. They're, they're there to serve. They're there to make you aware of your situation, your current situation, but they're not there to help you make decisions. You use your mind for that. Um, let me see. Who has good books on a uh, set uh, for a children of age five to seven? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. 
uh, and I know I just mentioned a book here, but that's for Ma'at, for children, instructions for children. But um, but nothing on our set specifically uh, in terms of University Kemet Press. So that that is a good question. I'll, I'll have to look up. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to honestly answer your question at Poser P. Uh, let me see. We got about five minutes left. Any other questions? I want to know feedback about what I said, you know, or the, the concepts of a high an African centered high value man. Does it make sense? Am I overreaching? You know, you know, I want I want feedback. Um, so. Let me see. And, you know, besides the network, uh, Sister uh, Valicia, what is um, what is your thoughts on, you know, the at least the, the basic 10 list that I had? Uh, any objections? You're still on mute if you are are speaking. All right, and Thought Evoker says we are 100% on agreement, saying that crooked masses depend on of manipulating feelings of others exactly. The four is uh, hidden under the, the what? I see, I see. Uh, appreciate it, appreciate it. Um, Thought Evoker said force, and makes 100%. And ATL Superstar said it was very balanced. All righty, well, um, I do appreciate y'all time. I, I don't want to go past two hours. So I went a little bit over in terms of the first hour. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to end the show uh, on this mark. And uh, Valicia, if you're still there, you can stay on a little bit after uh, once I end the show. So, But I appreciate e each and every one of you for listening. Um, I uh, value your feedback. And um, until next time. Uh, oh, and my social media, of course, you can hit me up on Twitter, on Facebook, of course, YouTube, and my website at asarimhotep.com. So until next time, peace. Peace.